ACE is a great new synthesizer that released at the tail end of 2009. ACE stands for Any Cable Everywhere, and it's a modular synthesizer, virtual analog. It allows you to use patch cables to not only connect modules, but to route modulation. Sounds easy at first, but actually there's a few little tips I've wanted to share with you that will shorten your learning curve with ACE. And so in this video, what I'm going to do is give you an uh, overview of the interface and also build some presets from scratch to give you uh, some real world ideas on how these cables might be used. So I've opened ACE and this is a, the default preset. And you'll notice that there's these sockets on the interface. There's dark gray and silver sockets. Dark gray is an output socket and silver is an input socket. So if you want to patch between, let's say, modulation wheel and a filter, you drag and drop from the output to the input and drop the cable. And now you've just connected the modulation wheel to this input socket. Cable color is random. And if you want to cycle through the colors, you single click at the end of the cable. If you double click at the end of the cable, it unplugs the cable from the input socket. Before I talk more about the patch cables, I want to talk a little bit about the default routings. There are some default routings for parameters. For example, this is the cutoff filter. And you'll see right underneath it, there's a knob that's labeled LFO. That's hardwired to LFO2. So if I go over to LFO2 and turn up the sync time, you'll see that it is in fact tied to LFO2. There are also two types of knobs within ACE. Unipolar knobs like resonance typically start at 0 and go to 100. Bipolar knobs have a break in the top of the ring and they typically start at negative 100 at the break at 0 and then at the top of this ring or halo you get to a value of plus 100. The advantage of unipolar knobs is that you can use this for both positive and negative gain on modulators. One other quick tip, if you double click on a knob it resets it to its default value. So let's put this into practice and create a preset where we're going to use the modulation wheel to open up the filter. I'm going to go ahead and turn up LFO2 just so you can hear that, how that affects the sound. And I'm going to grab a patch cable from Mod Wheel and drop it into the input socket right under this knob. Now when I play a note, you'll hear that this LFO is no longer in effect. By patching to this input socket, we've actually changed the function of this knob. It's no longer controlling LFO2, but instead it's controlling the gain of the modulator coming into the input socket. So it's a really important concept to understand within ACE that by dropping a cable to an input socket you now disable the default routing and the function of the knob changes. Alright, now that I have modulation patched to the filter cutoff, I'll turn the filter cutoff down a little bit. I'm going to press a key and I'm going to sweep up the mod wheel and you'll note that there's no change in the sound. Well that's because I haven't turned the gain up for the cable. If I turn this all the way up and I press a key, and now if I move my mod wheel up, you'll hear that it controls the filter. As I mentioned, I can also use negative gain, so if I turn this knob completely the other way, and I turn the filter way up, and I press a key, now when I push the mod wheel up, it closes the filter. I'm going to switch it back so that it's positive. Now another key concept in ACE is that you, if you try to map a second output to the same input, let's say I try to map pressure or aftertouch to the same socket, it overrides the initial cable. So uh, an input socket can only receive input from one output. So let me go ahead and drag my mod wheel back up here so we get the patch back where it was. But you can have a, a one-to-many relationship with output to input. So for example, I can take mod wheel and map it to resonance. And you'll notice that there's no uh, gain knob associated with this particular parameter.
So now the mod wheel is controlling filter, cutoff, and resonance. Instead of uh, mapping the mod wheel to both, I'm going to map pressure to resonance. So now if I press harder, you hear the resonance come in if I move up the mod. Let's turn this down a little more. All right, let's try something a little more complex. I'm going to create a new preset. I've reloaded the default preset. I'm going to create a new preset and I'm going to use LFO1 to modulate the filter using a sample and hold circuit. I'm going to use LFO2 to modulate the pitch of oscillator 2 and I'm going to use the modulation wheel to sweep between the two oscillators. So let's take the output of LFO1, drop it on the filter. I'm going to go ahead and turn the filter down and the uh, cutoff down and the resonance up. And I'm going to press a key. And if I turn the gain up here, you hear that LFO1 is in fact modulating the filter. And then I can turn this level up as well. All right, you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, in addition to real time modulators, there's also items like white noise generators. So if I map white noise output to the input socket SNH, which is sample and hold on the LFO, I've just created a sample and hold circuit using white noise. All right, now I'll take the output of LFO2 and drop it to what would be pitch for the second oscillator. And this mix knob mixes between oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. So if I press the key, you're hearing oscillator 1. If I turn the knob all the way the other way, you're now hearing the output of oscillator 2. Now I can take the mod wheel and I can map it to the mix. And if I sweep the mod wheel, it modulates between oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. All right, I'm going to show you one more important concept. It's called a multiplier. I'm going to go ahead and remove that patch cable and just go back to the original single oscillator. Let's say I want sample and hold to be modulated by the mod wheel. If you take the output cable of white noise and plug it into this multiplier, then you can route the output of this multiplier back to sample and hold. And I'm going to go ahead and click these so that the cables are the same color. So that's the same result. Except now I've added a gain knob that I didn't have before on sample and hold. I can control gain from the multiplier using this knob. But more importantly, I could take mod wheel and plug it into this mod input socket. Now the mod wheel controls how much white noise is being sent to LFO1. Leave you just with one more concept and that's daisy chaining. You can daisy chain cables. So I'm going to map a mod wheel to this parameter and then I can map from input socket backwards to this input socket. All right, so that's Patch Cables 101 with Ace. So take what you've learned in these videos and head back into the factory presets and what you see there is going to make a lot more sense to you now that you understand how this patch cable system works. For more tips on electronic music production, swing by modulatethis.com.